morning guys this is day number two in the small little country of Brunei and we might get a little rain today it's looking a little cloudy up there but our mission for today is to head on out <clears throat> right now we are at the entrance to Tasik Lamas recreational park right in the middle of city center pretty much right outside city center and we're looking for a waterfall here and then after this today we're gonna probably check out a mosque or two and hopefully we're gonna catch a boat ride over to the amazing little well, I shouldn't say little, the biggest floating village in the world. We're gonna go check out what life is like there. And then, hello. And then after we do that, we're gonna try to go find some proboscis monkeys. You know those guys with the funny noses. So that's our plan for today. So far things haven't been working out as we planned too much here in Brunei, but maybe today will go a little better. Yesterday I ended up with a massive splitting headache last night, so after our little food market we call it quits but now here we are feeling better the rain's holding out a little bit hopefully and we're gonna go find us a waterfall <clears throat> All right, guys, so we just got to the waterfall and we met a local here who told us that there is no water in the waterfall because it hasn't been raining much this year. So we got a dried up waterfall. <laughs> but I got to admit, being in this little recreational park is pretty cool because this is like the closest we've come to the jungle since we've been here in Borneo. And it does have that good... Oh, yeah. these steps are a little bit slippery here. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely has that jungle feel, which is nice. It's humid as hell though. I mean, we're both pouring sweat just from the humidity here. So let's come around here and see what the waterfall used to look like. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a little bit left. Let's go over to the viewing station. So when we got to the front gate, there was nobody working there. We just walked right in, no charge, free. Like most things I hear are here in this country, the Sultan pretty much takes care of his people. And, oh yeah, I can see how this might have looked great at one point. Oh, there's a viewing platform up there. And then there's the waterfall. walking path we've been on like comfortable wise honestly. yeah yeah it's like a children's playground it's mushy like that squishy feeling like i said the park is nice and it's free oh yeah look at a little turtle down there so the park is nice it's free i bet you when the sun is blazing it must be really nice to come in here and enjoy the shade and i think we're gonna walk around a little bit more there are a lot of trails you can walk around here and then we'll probably head back to our hotel. It's just a 20 minute walk from our hotel to here. What are these? Looks like it used to be a rock climbing wall or something. Oh, that's pretty cool. The reason I have to walk back to the hotel is because we have to get changed. If we're going to head to the mosques, we can't wear shorts, we can't have shoulders showing or anything like that. So we both got to go put on a pair of pants. And then we'll probably head back to the hotel, take, get rid of all that so we can go out on the boat and explore. Because it is just too hot to wear pants and sneakers all day. For a free park right in the middle of city center, this is actually really, really nice. It's peaceful, it's quiet. We've only seen a few people walking around here. It's a Saturday afternoon, it's about 12. Seen two other people walk by. Oh, there's someone over there. But yeah, it's really peaceful here. I like it. It gives you that, like in Japan. In Tokyo, there's that park and it's called the, uh, the illusion of seclusion. You're right in the middle of the city and you can't even hear the or see the skyscrapers or hear the cars or anything. You just feel like you're in the middle of the jungle. That's kind of what I get the impression I get from this place. The illusion of seclusion. You'd never know. We're in the middle of the capital of Brunei right now. So 
So that was a quick little stop. I guess it took us about a half hour to walk the main loop. The lady there said there is another little like trail that goes up the hill, but she said there's nothing up there to see. It's not worth going. And so we're heading on to our next stop now. But I gotta say, the people here have been super friendly. Everybody that we see smiles, waves, says hello. Curious as to why we're here. Everybody's like, nothing to do in Brunei. What are you doing here? And then I get, I keep thinking about the two vloggers that I watched. You know, you got Drew Brinsky who made that video about it saying he hated it and then came back and he loved it. And then that guy Chris, Travel with Chris came and he said he loved it here. But he loves every place. That's why I love that guy. He's just such a happy guy. He loves every place. But to be honest with you, it is a nice country and the people are friendly. But there's really no reason to come here for more than like two or three days. There's nothing to do here for tourists. And as far as like at night, you can't even go out for a drink or anything. There's no alcohol in this country. You can't smoke. No nightclubs, no bars, no dancing. If you want to have any sort of nightlife kind of activity, you got to drive all the way across the country to the Malaysian border. There's one border town that you cross over into Malaysia where you can drink and have a life, and then you got to come back here then. So, because drinking is yeah, life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, you can't socialize, yeah. you can't go out and meet women here. There's no clubs, there's no bars, there's no nothing like that. So, I mean, it's rough here, I guess, for the people who live here. It's the kind of lifestyle you just. No, everybody seems happy though, so I mean yeah. that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, not too much to do here for tourists. There's a couple of mosques, there's this park, and then there is a national park that we're thinking about going to tomorrow, but it is like super hard to get to and super expensive. I think it's like $100 a person to get there and get in, because you got to take a boat there and there's a canopy skywalk, so it sounds really cool. We might go do that tomorrow. But yeah, other than that, just you check it out, mosques. There's the floating village, which is famous. We're gonna go see that today. But otherwise, there's really nothing for tourists here. So keep that in mind. If you are coming, if you like us and you're trying to get to see the whole world, you don't need more than a couple of days here, two or three. We scheduled four, and I don't think we even need that, to be honest with you. All right guys, so this here is the Golden Jubilee Crown Park and it was built in 2017 as part of the ceremony when they introduced the new Sultan, the 29th Sultan of Brunei. And um, as you can see, his mosque, his dad's mosque is right there behind it. So everybody comes here, this is a place to pray and meet and gather, they have celebrations here. And other than that, every day since we've been here, there's been nothing going on in this park. It's locked, you can't even get in. But you do get a view of the mosque from here, which is pretty cool. And I think that's where we're heading now. We stopped by the other day when we first got here, but it was closed because it was Friday. And so we're hoping we can get in there today. All right, guys, so here we are, we're at the mosque. And as we walk over there, I did make a few observations I'm gonna mention. One is the cost of things. Our hotel is costing us uh, 190 for four nights, so about $45 a night or so which is on on course for you know maybe a little bit high for Southeast Asia but pretty much everything else is about the same price as everywhere else in Southeast Asia even McDonald's which you'll have to check out our McDonald's world tour video from Brunei but even like a Big Mac there it was five dollars for a Big Mac which you know it's for something in Thailand it's a little bit more expensive in the US obviously but the prices here aren't that bad all right guys so this mosque that we're at now is the omar ali safadan mosque and it was named it was built by the current sultan's father back in the 1950s it's most famous because it just dominates the skyline here in the capital and for its golden dome roofs up there see that gold that's all gold up there so we stopped by a few minutes ago, but they weren't open yet. And he said we can go eat lunch and come back and they'd let us in once it opens. So we're here. We're going to go check it out now. This is the one that opened on Friday the 13th. And take a peek at the inside. Okay. Uh, do you know what's the name of this mosque? Omar Ali. Ah uh, yes. yes, I can't that's pronounce better, it. That's better because before you, I had I, I asked the travelers. They only say like, uh, 
It's very long name. They said. And oh, then, I tried to yeah, memorize it. Yeah. Omar Ali is better because yeah. some will be saying uh, Ali Omar Jambalap Jambalap. That's Omar, right. Yeah. And this was built of for the Sultan's father built this, uh, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This mosque name is Omar Ali Saifuddin Mosque. It was built in 1954. It was officially launched uh, by the late father of the king, the late Sultan Omar Saifuddin, on Friday, 26 September 1958. So we just celebrated the 65th anniversary of this mosque. Last September, 26 September. Okay, it used to be the Grand Mosque, but it's not longer the Grand Mosque because we have another mosque much bigger than this mosque. That is the Jami Asriya Sanil Bokiah Mosque. Have you been there? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, if you have free time, you go there. That that is the current Grand Mosque, which uh, can accommodate five thousand worshippers. Well, this one only three thousand worshippers. Okay, the materials used for building this mosque. All, the... All right, so that guy gave us a nice little history tour of the mosque in there. That was pretty nice of him. And then he told us about a market that's going to be going on out here tomorrow morning where he'll be out there doing karaoke and invited us to come along. So we might stop by there and see the Sunday market fun day. Sunday fun day is always something we're into. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to walk around these grounds one more time. This is built in the middle of a lagoon here. You can see it's surrounded by water everywhere. Really nice. I mean, even he said, as far as mosque goes, it's not the most grand mosque you'll go to. Even in this country, there's another one. It used to, this one used to be called the Grand Mosque, but they built a newer one that is now the Grand Mosque because it's grander, I guess, than this one is. So I think we're going to try to get a peek of that one later. I don't know if we have enough time right now to go there, but we're going to try to get a peek of it. If we take a dart, we will. You want to take a dart now and go see it? We can do that. All right. Decision made. We're going to dart to the other mosque. <laughs> they don't have Uber here or Grab or Jet or Bolt. They have Dart here. So we signed up for that app. And uh, it hasn't been too expensive, right? No. I think it was like $2 the other day for a 10-minute ride or something like that. So not bad. And in this heat, I mean... Yeah, sometimes you like just got to pay the two bucks because it. it is so humid. She was saying that the other day it was... 84 degrees out, but it felt like 96 or something because of the humidity, something crazy like that. And I believe it because we came out, the minute you walk out, your glasses fog up and it's just like hot, hot, hot. Brought out a solid frozen water bottle this morning, a whole big one liter one. In 15 minutes, it melted totally. All right, so we're going to, I think we got enough shots of this. We're going to head out now, find this dart and dart over to the Grand Mosque. We'll see you guys there. So the mosque was closed, we looked it up on our way there and found out that they were closing so we didn't bother going there. And now we've got a guy right here who just offered to give us a ride on his boat. There he is. And he's going to take us on a tour, we're going to go see the monkeys which we wanted to do and we're going to go see the floating village which we were looking forward to. So we hired him for two hours to take us around and show us all these things. about this village and our driver here doesn't speak too much English so hopefully once we get out there we'll get some information on it. Uh, okay. Alright that was a quick little ride guys and we are now here at the floating village the Kampong AR Cultural Center and Floating Village. So we're gonna head on in sign our name on the roster and Hopefully get a little information about this place. So when you guys get to the island, you come and you sign in here. It's free, no charge. You just got to sign in so they know how many people are walking around their little village. And then right behind the signing desk, there's this little museum here. It doesn't have much information, but it's got a lot of these type of little displays and stuff like that. Oh wow, this is the 10th century this one started, this village. From what I've read online, this settlement's been here, like I just said, from the 10th century. But um, yeah, it's over a thousand years old. And it was a, at one point, this was actually the capital of Brunei, this little floating village here. Obviously, I was before the oil days and the big money. 
basically saying that a lot of the finances in the early days came from women selling their wares in the boats floating around out here. This is the 19th century. Oh yeah, look at these weapons. here for a few minutes try to get some more info and then we'll fill you in on what we find oh, out oh yeah uh -huh. all right we'll keep it rolling we found the viewing tower that he was telling us to go check out all right we made it to the top of the viewing tower and here's the view you get some of them homes out there look pretty damn modern <laughs> They're on stilts and all, but they look very modern. Oh, look at those dark clouds out there. Is a secondary school? All right, so once you go in and sign the guest book, you can walk around that little museum that's in there. It gives you a little history of the place. And read up on it online before you come here. You'll get a lot more information quicker that way. And then you come up to that little tower there, get a view of the whole village from up there. I was pretty surprised how some of the buildings look very modern, but we're gonna go in and take a peek. Then once you come across this little bridge that I'm on now, you can head yourself into the village and get a little taste of it. From what we can tell though, there's not much life going on here. I don't see too many people, too much activity in there. Like, so walking along these boards, some of them are a little suspect. You can tell they've been here a thousand years. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Oh. <laughs> I'm fine. That's what I meant by some of these boards are a little suspect. Look, this one's missing altogether right here. This one's broken. Oh yeah, look at that. There's an island kitty. There's a little cat in there. Alright, I'm not going no further on these woods. I'm gonna head that way. So yeah guys, if you come out here, definitely watch where you're walking. Some of these boards are not very good. You can see they replace some of them, but... Oh, some are pretty shady. Are we going this way? I see people just living their life here. Like those three kids were just hanging out watching something on their phone. It's not the cleanest place I've seen in Brunei. And there's a lot of garbage in here. I hear music playing. There was one little shop back there, but there was nobody in it because we wanted to get something like a drink or something just to support the village, but nobody was in the shop, so we're just walking now. You can see this is definitely the more modern, wealthier area of this village because the, the grounds made of con the uh, boardwalks are made of concrete and doors all have like this netting on the porches here and gates to move into the houses and gold covered doors. Oh, here's a shop. Oh, it looks closed though. It says open. Are they open, you think? Try it. See, I'll film you getting shocked by the electric. <laughs> <laughs> You want to get a soda or something? Yeah, I'll probably grab a I don't want anything. I'll just share what you get. Hello. Hello. She's only, she's going to get her. Where's 
this fruit tea black tea. Okay. How much? One dollar. One dollar. One tip, one dollar. What do you want? Nothing, I said. Were you not oh, listening? Sorry. I didn't hear you, I guess. Okay. Here you go. No, thank, you. thank you. A fruit tea. Fruit tea. Fruity fruit. <laughs> So that's her shop and her home. Pretty cool. So when you come to this water village, you can book it through a travel like Viator or one of those places or through your hotel. But you probably pay about twice as much as if you just come down to the water anywhere along the water in Brunei over there. Anywhere along there. The guys will be driving along their boats and they'll just stop and ask you, hey, you want to go to the water village? You want to go see the monkeys? And they charge only $15 per person per hour for the tour. So when you get here, you can have them just drop you off and leave if you want. And then you can spend all day walking around this little village. There are a few little shops in there selling sodas and stuff. I think there was one or two selling food. And that's pretty cool if you want to do that. But... Yeah, we've seen a lot of people here in Brunei. We want to go see some monkeys. So the other part of the tour that we arranged was for him to take us down now, down this river to the mangroves where apparently we can see the proboscis monkeys, those little suckers with the big noses. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to, if he comes back, he said he'd be here. I don't know where he is. But when he gets back, he's going to take us down to see the monkeys. And I think all in all, we're going to end up paying for two hours so probably about fifteen dollars each for two hours that's uh sixty dollars so if we get to see the monkeys it'll be a win so he was just telling us that in 2011 there was a big fire that burned down a lot of those houses in the village here and then the japanese came and rebuilt them with materials i guess they're fireproof and don't burn down so he was just very proud of that Oh, there's the recreation center there. The kids are playing soccer in there, he's telling us. Oh, that's the school right there? Okay. And we go public holiday. Yes, one week in time. Friday and Sunday. Until one week. The Hello. Hello. Oh yeah. They're going back from school. Also, oh, in the morning they go to Malay and English, and in the afternoon Arabic. Oh, okay. So when when there's no drought and it's high tide, it comes all the way up to there. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. How the many the house go down? Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. How many people live here? Uh, uh, this year 2023. Good afternoon. Yeah, uh, Hello, good afternoon. 13,000. 13. 13, yeah. This year 2023. 2023, yeah. Before, uh, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, the population. Uh, 80 years. 80,000. 80, 80,000. 80, Woo! But the fact that the people move on the city because the house fire. This is the site where the house fire. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The fire was here. My house is there. You live in here? Yeah. And the fire, after the fire, I moved. Yeah. So he was saying before the fire, there was 80,000 people living here. Now there's only uh, 13,000. And this behind us is where the fire was. So all the houses around here are now gone and he said a lot of people just moved to the city after the fire hello. where are they <laughs> say hello hello 
Hello. Ini aku tambahkan Pak, kan Pak. Asda sem sapa kan pambil malam malam. Macam mau pambil. Kita sama. Thank you, love you too. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> they all crazy. I know that. <laughs> all the kids are just so happy to see Taurus here. <laughs> Hello, good morning. <laughs> what is this signal that they keep giving me? <laughs> they do a hand gesture like this. <laughs> See him up top up there. Very far up there, though. Well, this is monkey. Yeah, this is not no no normal monkey. Oh, this is just a regular normal, normal monkey. monkey. Not no puppies fish. Ah, oh, okay. All right, guys. So we came about three miles down the river, and that tree has normal monkeys. But he's gonna take us a little further because we're looking for proboscis. He said that the normal monkeys. The regular monkeys eat anything, cake, fruit, leaves, fish, but the proboscis monkeys only eat the leaves of these trees, so he's hoping we can find a couple of them. He says he spotted one. Oh. So he is up in the top of that tree, we can see him. I don't know how good he's going to come out on the camera here. Let me try to zoom in a bit. Morning and noon, no, uh, no monkey like this. Sleep. Uh, afternoon, okay. Can you get up close with your camera? Sure. Well, there he is with his big nose. I can see him. You got it? Kind of. <laughs> Alright, so we found the proboscis monkey sitting in a tree. So guys, that was the success. We got to see the monkeys after we saw the village. And if you look behind me, we are catching a beautiful sunset behind us here on the river. And now that it's getting darker, more and more are starting to come out. We can see them all in the trees now. There's, there's got to, we've probably seen at least 15 of them now. Just popping up. They're still very high up in the tree, so it's hard to film them, but we can get good, good views of them though. Wish we brought a camera with a telephoto lens. But their big noses are not hard to spot. You can see them from all the way down here with their big pointy noses. They're pretty cool. So it was a success. For a while we were getting worried we might not be able to see them because it was getting dark. But we did it. We made it. So guys, we're making one more stop here, and it's pretty dark. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it on this camera here or not. But there are lightning bugs in these trees. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. But I think with the sky in the background like that, I don't really know if you'll be able to see them on this camera too well. Bye bye, thank you. Oh my god, is your butt hurting? No. Oh, my butt and my legs are hurting from sitting on that boat. But we ended up staying out there about three and a half hours, which is much longer than we wanted to stay. So we ended up paying a little bit more. But I gotta admit, 
The mangrove was really cool. We got to see some proboscis monkeys. Hopefully we got a shot for you of them. And we got to see the floating village, which was pretty awesome. Everybody was so friendly there. Yeah, everybody was, all oh, the kids at the floating village made it all worth it with their smiles and their waves and hellos and I love yous. And it was pretty <laughs> silly. They kept yelling, we love you. <laughs> but it was amazing. And now I think we're gonna start walking back to our hotel and maybe find a little snack along the way. But we're gonna leave you guys here. I need to stretch my legs. So what do you think? That's it? That's it, yeah. Good time? For today, yeah. Was it worth it? The boat trip? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely so. going down to see the mangroves was worth it. So that's it, guys. If you're still here at the end of this video, we love you. We appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe because we got some more coming. And we got some more countries coming up. We're almost to the halfway point. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we really love it if you leave us a comment. Not only does it help YouTube notice us, but we love hearing from you guys. Give us some advice. Tell us what you want to see. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you Bye soon. Tomorrow.